Okay, so for today, our topic of discussion will be correlation. Um, we won't be diving deep into the applications part or or the textbook stuff that you'll find in Quintil and other videos on YouTube, but uh, we'll be da- we- we'll be discussing about the geometrical intuition behind what correlation is and how it conveys the information that it does. That is, how does it quantify the strength of relationship between two variables? <clears throat> So let's start the discussion um, and write the topic of discussion that is correlation. Correlation, the literary formula for correlation is given by covariance between x and y divided by standard deviation of x times the standard deviation of y. Now uh, if you'll expand this formula, then you'll get sigma um, x minus x bar times y minus y bar divided by n minus 1 whole divided by root over sigma x minus x bar squared divided by um, n minus 1 times root over sigma y minus y bar squared divided by n minus 1. The n minus 1 factor gets cancelled out and you are left with sigma x minus x bar y minus y bar whole divided by sigma x minus x bar squared times root over sigma y minus y bar squared. So this is the final form of the equation or final form of the formula that you might have seen in your textbooks. <clears throat> uh, so so what I'll be doing is uh, I'll be dividing this discussion into two major portions. In the first portion, we will be dissecting this formula and trying to understand. And we will try to understand that and we'll try to understand that um, uh, uh, what does this formula conveys on a literal form, on a literal basis. And then in the second part of the discussion, we'll be uh, interpreting that form so, so that we can understand how it conveys the strength of relationship between two variables, how it quantifies strength of relationship between two variables. So let's start the first part of our discussion, which is to dissect the formula to understand its literal form. Um, so here, as you can see in the numerator part, you have some value on the x-axis, you have some value on the y-axis. Again, x-axis and y-axis values. So what happens when you, um, let me draw the pair of axes first. So what happens when you multiply or when you find, uh, or what happens when you multiply, when you find the product of two values which are measured on the axes which are perpendicular to each other. And by that I mean if I take some value here uh, on the x-axis, say x1, and some value here on the y-axis, say y1, <coughs> then um, what does this product x1 y1 actually conveys it conveys the area that is enclosed by this particular rectangle right x1 and y1 having its length having uh, this rectangle is, ha- is having x1 and y1 as its length and breadth as its dimensions so this is what x1 y1 represents this particular area right so essentially in the numerator what we are doing is we are finding the areas of the rec- uh, the areas of the rectangle corresponding to each of our point in the data set for each and every x and y we are finding the areas of the rectangle and the summations are uh, and the summation mark uh, signifies that we are summing all the areas up so, f- so first we are finding the areas let's say a1, a2, a3 and then we are summing up all those areas and dividing by and we divide it by n minus 1. Uh, so we are summing up all the areas and then we are dividing we are dividing it by this factor n minus 1. <clears throat> so it, it is nothing but finding the average area of the rectangle. This is what we are essentially doing right in the numerator part at least we are finding the average area of the rectangle. Some, we are summing all them we are summing all the areas up and dividing and dividing it by this n minus 1 factor which will give us the average area of the rectangle now what is the significance of this rectangle and why we are doing um, uh, and why we are performing such operations we'll discuss in the second portion but this 
but what i want you to focus on in this first portion of this uh, of this discussion is 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 that this is nothing but an uh, aerial representation of a rectangle of some rectangle this is nothing but area area of some rectangle right and in the denominator as well you will find that not here it is not as much visible as in the first form itself in the new in the denominator what we are essentially doing is we are uh, calculating the area of a rectangle whose dimensions are standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y that is an area of a rectangle whose having its length as standard deviation of x and its breadth as standard deviation of y so this is the area that we are dividing by um um that that we are dividing with with our with our numerator area of the rectangle so this is also a, a, the area of rec, of a rectangle uh, having standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y as its dimensions right so the formula in essence the formula of correlation is essence is nothing but the formula of aerial division we are dividing some area by some other area and um the resulting output is what we are uh, referring to as correlation now the question arises is the the main question arises after after this particular uh, description is that how how are these areas special i mean why are we choosing these areas for um for quantifying the relationship uh, of a quanti or, or quantifying the strength of relationship between two variables i mean how area is related to the strength of relationship strength of relationship um between the two variables how does area of some rectangles uh, help us quantify the strength of relationship between um the two variables this is the um immediate question that arises after this particular description that i have this that i have just made what is so special about these areas now um this this is the topic of our next is uh, this is the topic of our next portion of the next portion of our discussion because we have essentially what we have done in the first portion is we have distilled this formula down into its very basic nature area upon area division now we have to interpret it in a way such that um, this particular relation that we have made makes sense so that we can relate the areas with the strength of the relationship we have to interpret it we have to interpret this ratio area upon area in a way so that we can relate it with the strength of relationship between the two variables so this is what uh, we'll discuss in the second portion of the video so here um from the first portion the essence that we have drawn is that that the co co correlation uh, formula is nothing but the correlation formula is nothing but but a ratio of two rectangular areas area of some rectangle and area of another rectangle the denominator rectangle is quite special because as you can see the dimensions are very fixed the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y these are the dimensions of our um uh, of our denominator rectangle so yeah some the aerial division by some 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 area of the rectangle divided by some other area of uh, some other area right okay so now we'll move on to the second part of our discussion so let's make some space in our whiteboard um and let's draw the pair of axes uh so these are uh, these are the pair of axes that i have drawn i mean um um they're not perfect but uh it will uh, uh but it it won't uh, affect our illustration or discussion so um let's let's let, let's assume so let's assume a data set let's assume some data points on the plane so that we can perform our illustration so this is the data set that i have uh, that i'm making having some positive relationship as you can see yeah so this is the data set and <clears throat> this is the mean of of our independent uh, data variable and this is the mean of our dependent data variable
and this point here it is let me draw it on the other side this is x bar y bar right now why i have drawn it uh, separately i mean what is so special about this point so to understand the significance of this point we first have to analyze the formula again we'll have to analyze the formula again but from a different point of view so um if as you can see here in this case let me clean it up a little bit sigma x minus x bar times y minus y bar so so here as you can see if you have studied transformation of axes and shifting of origins in mathematics in your high school mathematics then you might have noticed that here we are performing the system uh, i'm sorry here we are performing the shifting of origin methodology and we are shifting the origin to x bar and y bar uh and if you're not familiar with that then let me just give you a brief overview of uh, what I, of what i just mean so what is the role of origin in a coordinate system uh, in a coordinate system the zero of a coordinate system or the origin of the coordinate system it differentiates between the positive side of an axis a uh, uh, positive side of an axis and uh, and the negative side of an axis same uh, whether it is x axis or y axis it separates the positive side and the negative side right this is what zero does now any point which is having this kind of property of separation of of separating positive and the negative sides can be termed as the origin now if you see here in in this particular case <coughs> uh, in this expression uh, x minus x bar if uh, uh so this so what this expression does is that it shifts the origin to the point x bar why i am saying that why am i saying that because if if you choose any point if you assume any point to the left uh, i'm sorry to the right of the x bar then uh, obviously it will be greater than x bar so x minus x bar will be a positive number so here any point chosen on this side will have a positive result and any point chosen to the left of x bar will have a negative re negative result because uh any point chosen on the left of <coughs> x bar will be less than x bar so x minus x bar will be negative right so uh any point chosen on the left side left hand side of x bar will have a negative result so this is what this is uh, the property of separation is being possessed by this point as well um as as we had with the origin at first right it it is now separating the positive and the negative side of the axis and this is what this point is doing as well this 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 point is doing as well y minus y bar so when we perform these two operations simultaneously it shifts the origin of of, of our coordinate system to x bar y bar so now i our origin has been shifted from 0, 0,0 to x bar y bar and that's why i have drawn this point um in this manner um that's why i have highlighted this point in this manner okay so this is the basic theory behind why uh, be behind uh, behind shifting of origins and transformation of axes um so essentially we so essentially this is our new origin this point is our new origin this particular point so let me extend the axes around this origin <coughs> as well now what we'll do is we'll follow the footsteps of the formula and see what the formula is trying to convey in the numerator part first uh, first we'll tackle the denominator part then we'll move on to the numerator part because the numerator part is um <clears throat> kind of requires some healthy amount of discussion but the but the denominator part part is quite simple we just have to calculate the area of the rectangle having the standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y as its <coughs> dimensions as you know that the standard deviation uh uh the 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 standard deviation is defined as the average distance of a point from the mean right so let's say we define this length as the uh standard deviation of x okay so if we'll map that length to uh, according to our new origin therefore this will become uh, 
I think I've drawn it a little bit longer. Um, <clears throat> this will approximately become the standard deviation of x. And if, uh, we, if the, this is what we're assuming, uh, this is our assumed standard deviation of x and let's assume a standard deviation of y as well. So this is our standard deviation of y, STDY. So in th this is our denominator rectangle, okay? This is what the denominator rectangle is. Um, conveying this is this is the denominator rectangle having standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y as its dimensions <clears throat> as its length and as its length and breadth now let's move on to our let's move our attention to the uh, to the numerator part of our of our formula so let's choose another color um green maybe green would be good so <clears throat> What we're essentially doing here in this case is we are uh, for each and every point for each and every point in our data set for every x and y point for every x and y point let, uh, if this is not visible then let me choose another dark color maybe black for every x and y point that we have in our data set what we're essentially doing is for all of those points we're finding the corresponding area uh, by taking that uh, by taking the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the point as the length and breadth of that rectangle so for each and every point we have to calculate the rectangle rectangular area for this for this for this and for this for uh, for this as well for all of these points we have to calculate the area of the rectangle then we have to sum them all up this is what uh, uh, so we have we have we have we are following the full footsteps of the numerator part of the formula. So we we have found the area as a one, a two, a three, a four, and so on and so forth till a n. And what we are essentially doing is we are summing them all up. So we have so we are following the summation mark now, and we are finding the average area of the rectangle. <clears throat> Now, if you'll calculate this particular expression, then you'll get a value. Say the value is t. This is what I'm assuming. The This is what the average area comes out, right? This is the procedure for finding average. Here we are uh, finding the average. And the, the average comes out to be t. Now, this is just an, this is just the value of area, right? value of area and you know that the value of area is not sufficient to draw the rectangle because you're not because you don't know what the length and the breadth of the rectangle is uh, as as you know that if i if i tell you that uh, a rectangular area is 12 meters square then the length of the rectangle can be 4 and the breadth can be 3 or the length can be 4 or the breadth can the length can be three and the breadth can be four and so on and so forth so there the, 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 the are infinite pairs of length and breadths that can be made corresponding to just one area right so uh, if, because this is just a number and we don't know the length and breadth division of that area so we we have the flexibility of choosing a particular length or breadth uh, whatever you want and uh, then then we can divide that length or breadth with the area to find the corresponding uh, whatever the dimension whatever dimension is left so if, if we assume the length has say some l a then we'll divide then the breadth of then the breadth of the rectangle b will be t divided by l a right so so th this is the flexibility that we have because because uh, the numerator will only spit out a value and uh, um, and to make our and to make our calculation and analysis easier what we'll do is we will um, assume the length of assume the length of this uh, rectangle the average uh, the average rectangle uh, the uh, the average area of the rectangle that we have got we'll assume the length of the track rectangle to be standard deviation of x this is the step that we are doing to to make our calculations easier to make our analysis easier so so if you assume the length of the standard deviation um, so, so if you assume the length as your standard deviation then the breadth will come out to be some value say t divided by standard deviation of x and we we call it tb okay so let's draw that uh, let's draw this but let's draw this particular average rectangle that we have got 
um, in our in our coordinate in in our plane in our x and y plane. Let me uh, erase and clean my whiteboard a little bit. Okay. So let's go here and draw our average rectangle. So our average rectangle that we have got is uh, is having the length same as that of the as that of the denominator rectangle and it is having some breadth some breadth which is tb this breadth is tb right and this particular length is um, standard deviation of x this is the rectangle that we are talking about now you know that this point this particular point is stdx and stdy right and uh, this particular point is nothing but uh, um, T, uh, STDX and TB, right? STDX and TB. That doesn't matter. Um, but uh, I, I have just written it down so that you can understand that what, what we have done essentially. <clears throat> now that we have drawn our rectangles, now we'll understand the significance of these rectangles and um, and uh, and how and how do and how do they help in in quantifying the strength of relationship between the variables okay so let's start our discussion with uh, the numerator rectangle first now as you can see that the numerator rectangle this particular point this particular point in our numerator rectangle uh, why is it special uh, why this point and why this rectangle is special um, now you have to look at this uh, uh, particular procedure that we have done in the numerator from a very broad point of view. What we're essentially doing is we are finding the average point, the position of an average point in our data set. Uh, for example, <clears throat> if I uh, if I if I if I take some uh, if I take a data set having these points. Um, having these points so if i ask you to find the data set then obviously you know that the uh, that the area of high density uh, if i ask you to find the average point of the data set then uh, you obviously know that the that the area of high density will uh, will be having the average point in the data set because if if you don't have any outliers if you don't have any uh, outlier values very small or very large values compared to the rest of the values that you have in your data set then average is a very good measure to understand the majority proposition of a data set in 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 everyday life as well when we say <clears throat> when we use the word average what we mean is where the majority of the proposition or where the where the majority of the views lie right uh, the average view when we say the average view of the market or the average price of uh, something then then what we what we mean is that most of the things are uh, are are coming at that cost or the uh, or or uh, uh, like <clears throat> as i have said that if if i if i say that um average price of something is this in the market then what i mean is most of the uh, most of the people who are selling it are, are are selling at that price right if you again if you don't have any outlier values or if you don't have any um any uh, if you have if you don't have any if you don't have a skewed data set then then average is a very good measure of uh, of 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 the mature of, of uh, average is a good measure to understand the majority proposition of a, of, of of a data set right so uh, so so the average point would lie somewhere like uh, somewhere over here right this is the this will be this this will be the probable position of the average point of this data set of this data set so this rectangular trick that we have used in the numerator is actually helping us to find the av for, to find the average point to find the average point in our data set so that so this is the reason why it is lying in this high density zone of 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 um of our data set because um, um because the the, the, the because the the average point in the data set will obviously lie in the high density zone right so 
because it is uh, because average tries to capture the um majority proposition the 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 high density zones um if if again if you have if you don't have any outliers then right so this is what it is doing um uh, so what we have actually done in the numerator part is that we have uh, the vertex the this word this particular vertex of our uh, numerator rectangle is telling us an av is telling us the position it is telling us the position of an average point in our data set it is telling us it is it is telling us the average or uh, the position of an average point in the data set right so this is where our uh, this is where an average point lies in our data set and that is what is conveyed in the numerator part of this particular equation the average position of a uh, the average position of a point in the data set where is it lying in the plane uh, at what position an average point lies in the plane obviously uh, the point having uh, the high density region the the region having um, um the region which is having ma majority number of most of the number of points will will be having this this uh, the re that region will be having this position as well um uh, assuming that there is no obviously outlier and skewness um then uh, then this average represents the average position of a point in the data set of where the points are lying in the plane Uh, so this is what is represented by the <clears throat> by the numerator rectangle now before moving on to the um before moving on to the denominator rectangle i want you to think of this particular relation uh, i'm sorry this particular um formula as being the formula of a real versus as being the ratio this particular formula is the ratio of a real versus ideal case <clears throat> why am i saying uh, why am i saying that why am i saying it that way because you you have understood that this real part you have understood we have discussed that is the, the this real part right this uh, the numerator is the real part of this uh, formula because the numerator is taking into account each and every point that we have in our data set based on that it is giving us an average point in the data set position of an average point in the data set right um and and why am i saying that the denominator is an ideal case because in the denominator we are not actually taking into account the relationship like in the in the numerator we are taking into account the relationship of every point x minus sigma times y minus y bar but in the denominator part these two are been taken have been taken separately the standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y they are being taken separately and no relationship has been taken into account that means we are not actually taking the real points that we have in our data set but rather we are making an ideal case by which we are comparing our real case to make uh, to make the to make the um to find some value so as you know that real values Uh, real values are obviously less than or equal to ideal values right i mean uh, the real cases are obviously less than or equals to ideal at best real case uh, at best real can be equal to ideal but more often than not real is always less than ideal so in case when real is equal to ideal you'll have real up, uh, the real upon ideal ratio will become 1 and if you have uh, <clears throat> uh real as being less than ideal then obviously real upon ideal will be greater uh, real upon ideal will be less than 1 so this correlation um uh, this this uh, the correlation uh, metric is nothing but a ratio of real upon ideal case um uh, and that's why the magnitude of correlation if you if you if you're familiar with the magnitude of correlation the magnitude of correlation always uh it is always less than 1 right the value of correlation al al always lies between minus 1 and 1 uh for positive relations it is from 0 to 1 and for negative relations it is from minus 1 to 0 so 
um, the, the this is the reason why the correlation values oscillate between minus one and one because the correlation is nothing but a ratio of real upon ideal, and if the real is equal to ideal. that is if the correlation is perfect so called then the correlation comes out uh, if the co if the correlation is perfect then these two cancel out and you you get one as your value and and in most of the cases the real is always less than ideal uh, less than ideal then you get the then you get the value as being less than minus 1 right so this uh, so, so the numerator point that we have got Uh, as the vertex of uh, this rectangle this black rectangle the numerator that the numerator rectangle that we have got represents the real case as as it is taking real points into account we have taken real points into account to get to this particular point to find this particular rectangle we have actually taken real points into account and that's why this point is the representation of this denominator uh, i'm sorry this point is the representation of the numerator part of this ratio the real part of this ratio right real part of the ratio then obviously you you will understand that uh, you, you will deduce that the numerator that the denominator part this particular rectangle this particular rectangle is what represents uh the ideal case and if if you have uh, followed my uh, if you have followed actually the footsteps of this equation and what we have done then you will notice that that uh, as as we have uh, as as our equation will will look like this after after the simplification stdx and stdy and then what we have uh, and then what we did was uh, we we broke we broke this area down into stdx times some breadth tb upon stdx times stdy right stdy this std std stdx and stdx point uh, uh, the this term cancels out and what we are left with is the ratio between stdy and tb tb and stdy so essentially what correlation is measuring is the degree of closeness of this particular point this particular point and this particular point the more this point gets closer to our ideal point which is this one which is this one this is the ideal point and this is the real point the more our real point gets closer and closer to the ideal point the ideal case the the correlation value our correlation value increases and the more the more far away it is from the ideal case our correlation value decreases so this is what is this is what in essence it is actually measuring the degree of closeness of the ideal point that we have calculated and the uh, and the uh, and the real point right it is the degree of closeness of the ideal point that we have calculated and the real point that we have calculated it is measuring the degree of closeness the more closer they are the higher the correlation value the far away they are the more the far the more far away they are the lower the correlational value so this is what it is measuring the degree of closeness now the last question that i want you to think about is and and we'll discuss about that as well why the standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y is being taken as the ideal case what is so special that makes them so ideal um uh for for them to compare for for them to become a standard to for for them to become a benchmark for comparison for so called the idealness of uh, of 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 the relationship between the variables x and y why they have become the benchmark why they have taken as the standard now to to understand that first um we'll have to take a value first we'll have to take a perfect correlational value when will you get a perfect correlation <clears throat> this is what we will discuss here so let's see let let's say that the rectangle that you have got after 
uh, that the that the the rectangles at each of the points are making are like this. This is one of the points. This is another point. This is another point. This is another point, and so on and so forth. As you can see in this particular case, what is happening is that um, the the this is uh, that all all of these particular rectangles that the points are making with this. Uh, uh, so the, this particular illustration that I have taken is separate from the previous one. It is it is separate. So uh, I have taken it just for the understanding purpose. So all of these points, as you can see. Are making the rectangles as with the as like the previous one, but this is special. This case is special. Why? Because um, <clears throat> as you can see that all of the uh, all of these rectangles, all of these rectangles, they are uh, a scaled version of this particular rectangle, this smaller rectangle, right? If this the area of this rectangle is say t, this particular t, then maybe this particular rectangle is two t. This particular rectangle is 3t. This particular rectangle is 4t. This particular rectangle is 5t. So, uh, what is happening is that the, these all all of these rectangles are the scaled version of this rectangle, right? All of the rectangles are the scaled version of this uh, this small rectangle. Let me highlight that small rectangle. So this is the basic unit, and all of the all of the other rectangles that I have made are, are the scaled version of are, are are the scaled version of the smaller rectangle. Now in this particular case, what will happen in the formula? Let's uh, uh, let's see. So first we have to uh, add up. Um, first, what we will do? Let's see. Let's say this is the um, value of x. And this is the value of y. Um, and for every rectangle that we, uh, for every other rectangle, we are moving um, x distance here and y distance here. So x. So for this rectangle, the x becomes 2x. For this rectangle, the x becomes 3x. For this rectangle, the x becomes 4x. And for this rectangle, x becomes 5x. Um, so we are moving even e e We are moving evenly in both the directions, x and y. So this for this, the the y coordinate is y. For this particular rectangle, the y coordinate is 2y, 3y, 4y, 4, and 5y respectively. <coughs> Okay, so what will happen is that when you, when you calculate the area for this for for this particular case, um, uh, well, when you calculate the correlation for this particular case, what will happen? What will happen is that. Um, uh, so let's apply the formula to see what happens. Um, what we'll do is. Uh, uh, we'll follow the we'll follow the general uh, formula that I have uh, written down uh, above. So it will become uh, summation of uh, x y plus two x times two y plus three x times three y, and so on and so forth. Let's say we we are only taking these three points into account and divide it by n minus <clears> one, <throat> and then the standard deviation of x we will get as x plus uh, 2x plus 3x uh, x squared plus 2x squared plus 3x 3 3x squared I'm sorry um, I've written y by mistake 3x squared divided by n minus 1 times again y squared plus 2y squared uh, plus 3y squared divide by n minus 1 uh, and both of them are under root uh, this these two will cancel out we can ca we can we can uh, factor out xy from above and we'll get um, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared in the in the bottom and i'm sorry and we'll get in in the in the in the um, in the denominator we'll get Again, we can factor out x from this side, uh, and uh, what we'll be left with, again inside the square root, will be one squared plus two squared plus three squared, 
times we'll, we'll factor out y from the other side as well we'll be left with again 1 squared plus 2 squared uh, plus 3 squared the the x y's will be cancelled out and these these values will cancel out as well and we'll be left with 1 now this particular case represents um, what you call the perfect correlation when 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 all of the rectangles that we have drawn they they are nothing but a scaled version of some other smaller rectangle so uh, here uh, only scaling takes place the rectangle the rectangle the basic area of the rectangle remains constant and only the scaling takes place so this is so uh, every other rectangle is nothing but the scaled version of this smaller rectangle right and the correlation in this case comes out to be 1 so what we were discussing uh, what we discussed what we were discussing before is why the why the standard deviation points uh, they are being uh, why the standard deviation points are taken as the ideal case now now let me make uh, some space to explain that as well now standard deviation points are special because uh, as per the definition of standard deviation you know that th this is x bar and this is y bar again that is this x bar and y bar are different from from what i have drawn here so uh, standard deviation point th this point let's say this is the standard deviation of x and this is the standard deviation of y standard deviation of y this particular point this particular point that we ha that i have taken it represents the intersection of both the standard deviations as you know that the standard deviation is defined as as uh, as, as as the distance of an average point in the um, in the data set from the mean right the distance of an average point uh, average distance of a point from the mean so this is the distance where most of the points are located from the mean right this is what standard deviation actually represents so the, this uh, so what what this particular point assumes is that if there had be if there is a perfect correlation between the between the two variables then uh, the the then the perfect correlation line the, for example in this particular case this is the perfect correlation line right so it assumes that the perfect correlation line will pass through this point okay will pass through this point if if there is a perfect correlation if there exists a perfect correlation in between the two variables then the that then the perfect correlation line will, will pass through this particular point <clears throat> now this point represents the uh, intersection of the standard deviations of uh, x and y right that means most of the points uh, in the x data set they are located somewhere over here right that's why it is the average distance of the point um uh, average distance of the point from the mean right from the uh, uh, standard deviations are calculated from the mean so uh, most of the points in the x data set they are located over here somewhere like that some somewhere over here that's why the standard deviations comes out to be that this distance right and same goes for the y as well most of the points are located somewhere over here that's why the standard deviation comes out to be this value therefore it assumes that uh, between these two points between these two particular points what is uh, what it assumes is that most of the points they overlap very close to this line this perfect correlation line maybe uh, uh, they, they, they lie very closely I mean it assumes perfect correlation so it assumes uh, that th all the points in between the standard deviation length here and the mean all the points between this particular all the points all, all the real points in this uh, uh, under this length and all the points under this length they they lie perfectly onto this particular line they map to each other rather perfectly onto this particular line if not perfectly then very close to this particular line like this right 
this is what it assumes so all the all, all of these points that i have shown you um it assumes a perfect map uh, it assumes a perfect mapping of these points of these points uh, with uh, it, it assumes the perfect mapping of the points over here in on the on the y data set with the uh, with the points here on the x data set and how it assumes that if the average is mapping perfectly because and because average represents the majority majority proposition of the data set if the averages are mapping perfectly then most of the points should be lying on to uh, sh should be lying um, somewhere around this line right sh should be lying somewhere around this line this is what it assumes because if you if you don't have any outliers in your again i'm repeating the same thing as i have said before which i've said before that if you if you don't have any outliers or you don't have any, uh, if you don't have uh, skewness in your data set then the majority the, the the this average the average represents the majority proposition the majority view the majorical view of the data set so if standard deviation point the average sta the average standard deviation points um, or the average lengths are intersecting this is what you assume if the average lengths or the standard deviation point are intersecting then the points that are lying uh, around this uh, around this standard deviation length because there's a reason why standard deviation comes out to be this length right this represents that most of the points are are located at this much distance from the mean most of the points are located at this much distance from the mean for for the y as well right so um so if 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 the averages are intersecting then most of the points should intersect at this line as well because if the average is intersecting then as average represents the maturity proposition then most of the points should intersect on this line as well on this part on this particular line as well if and only if the correlation is perfect right if the correlation is perfect then the points will definitely lie on this particular line and if the correlation is not perfect then uh, they may, they might get they might be in reality they will be scattered over the o over the plane they won't be lying um and the, it won't be lying very close the line the points won't be lying very close to this line right so this is what it measures so uh, this is what correlation measures actually if you if you see here uh, uh, in this particular example as well if i draw the perfect line it measures how much and how much a real point is close to this perfect correlation line okay how much the real point the real point being this particular point that we have drawn from the from the numerator part of the formula how much the real point is closer to the perfect correlation line if if the average real point if the average real point let's say this is the average real point real average point that we have drawn from the uh, numerator part of the formula average real point or real average point whatever you, whatever you may say if the real average point is closer to this line then that means then we can extend this argument and say that if the average point is closer to this line then most of the point should be closer to this line and if most of the points are closer to this line then the correlation is very high and if they are on the line if they are lying on the line then the correlation is perfect if they are very close to the line then you have a very high correlation value the more far away this point is then uh, the, if if this point if the real point is far away from this line then we can uh, the average or the average always uh, the average the average proposition will always be uh, will obviously be extended to the majority population majority of the data points so if the average is if if the average is uh, 
far away from the line then obviously the proposition the deduction that will be made by this formula is um, most of the points are far away from this line and if the average is closer to this line then most of the points are closer to this line and i have just explained you why this line acts as the most ideal line because in this particular line we are assuming the intersection of um we are assuming the intersection of standard deviation right this point assumes the intersection of standard deviation this particular point assumes the intersection of standard deviation and standard deviation is the length where most of the points lie with respect to the mean and if the standard deviation point is intersecting then most of the points which lie around that length around this particular length this this particular most of the points lie in this particular region uh, right around this particular uh, around this length right so if if <clears throat> if if the standard deviation points are intersecting then uh, then respectively on both the axes the majority of the points that lie around that region around the region of the standard deviation respectively for both the uh, uh, data sets they must also be they, they must also intersect uh, uh, onto this line as uh, onto this line as well they must also intersect or they must also map to each other uh, um, onto this line um, as well as 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 the average as the because the average is being uh, because the average the because the intersection of the averages are being taken into account the standard deviation values are obviously averages right average length at which most of the points are lying from the mean so if the averages are intersecting then the proposition that we then then the deduction that we can make is if the averages are intersecting then most of the points around that region should also intersect right onto this line and that's why the the denominator part is independent of the relationship between the points it is taken separately right these two are separately the covariance part or the numerator part it takes into account the real data points and the denominator part it it doesn't take into account the real data point it assumes uh, the intersection of the standard deviations and if the standard deviations are intersecting then the standard deviation is the average uh, length at which the points are located from the mean so most of the points are located at the standard deviation length right most of the points are located on, on uh, uh, in in that particular region in the region of standard deviation so if the standard deviation points are intersecting then the points around that region should also map to each other on to the line which uh, which connect which connects the Uh, x bar y bar and the standard deviation intersection they must also um, they must also be very close to that line or or you can say that they must also map to the line perfectly if and only if the relation if and only if the correlation is perfect if uh, the correlation is perfect and 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 i have just shown you in which case the correlation is perfect Oh, this is the case where correlation comes out to be perfect right when um when when the when the rectangular areas are just are just uh, uh they they are just a, a scaled version of some smaller rectangular area or or the or the the rectangles the rectangular areas are just being scaled then then as you can see that then as you can see in this particular case that uh, if this is the standard deviation of x st std of x and this is the standard deviation of y then they are being intersected at this particular point and our assumption is not wrong as 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 if these points are intersecting then we are assuming the, then we are assuming that these point should these points should also intersect if the correlation is perfect right so we are assuming that 
if these points are if this point is intersecting the standard deviation of x point and the standard deviation of y point if this point is intersecting this particular point then these points should also intersect then these points these points should also intersect and in the perfect correlation case they do intersect they actually intersect then uh, that that means that our assumption of the ideal case is not wrong that uh, the denominator can be assumed as the perfect ideal case the denominator can be assumed as the the denominator can be assumed as the perfect ideal case i'm sorry yeah the denominator can be assumed as the perfect ideal case perfect ideal case ideal case for making comparison of relations for mapping out the relationship between the for mapping out the relationship between the points right so uh, so the so the denominator can be assumed as a perfect ideal case for mapping out or, or for comparison for 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 comparison of uh, um for comparison of uh, relationships for for standardizing relationships uh, between the variables right and this can become a benchmark this can become a standard the denominator the denominator can become a standard for comparing relationships for quantifying relationships uh, between the two variables and we can use this standard to to quantify the relationship between the variables uh, and numerator part is the real part right it 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 represents the real part of where the points are actually lying if the points uh if if the real point is very close to the standard deviation intersection that is that is this particular vertex uh, the, that is the uh, the ideal rectangular vertex if 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 the real point is closer to the ideal rectangular vertex then the relationship is very the relationship is the correlation is very high the strength of the relationship is very high and if if it is far away from that perfect correlation line or uh, it is if it is far away from the ideal uh, rectangular vertex then the correlation is very low so this is what it is um Uh, it is nothing but a real upon ideal comparison and, the, and that is the reason why the value of uh, correlation or the magnitude of correlation lies between uh, uh, the the value of correlation li lies between minus 1 and 1 or the uh, magnitude of correlation is always less than 1 because it is just a uh, because it is just an ideal versus real comparison and uh, um uh, obviously real is of more often than not um, less than ideal and that's why the correlation values are more often than not less than 1 but in case of perfect conditions if the uh, if the conditions are perfect that i have showed you when the, when does that happen and uh, and in this uh, and uh, and in that case um, the correlation value comes out to be 1 if the if the conditions are perfect or the real case is equal to the ideal case if if the points are very close to each other or, or i mean if the real point and the ideal point if they overlap if the real point and the ideal point in this case as you can see um in the in this particular case if if the ideal point and the real point they overlap if the ideal point and the real point if they overlap then we then we get the perfect correlation and i i i i i uh, i showed you another point of view of viewing the perfect correlation um another perspective of viewing the perfect correlation as as this rectangular point of view as well so uh, this is what it is um i'll sign off right now um from this particular video as the discussion as the discussion has got very dense uh, as the discussion has got, has got very dense um um the the video is approximately one hour long right now and uh, i won't be stretching it for uh, i won't be stretching it more um so thank you thank you so much for watching this uh, video and uh, i'll see you in the next one thanks